So let's do a little bit of a talk on pregnancy hormones. Um, the four main hormones we're going to care about are estrogen, progesterone, HCG, which is human chorionic gonadotropin, and human, human placental lactogen. There's a bunch of other hormones that, that change and increase during pregnancy, but we're going to ignore those for now. So estrogen, what does it do? Remember estrogen is growth. As um, stimulates growth, so a uterine growth it stimulates the growth of your mammary glands. So then, this increases during pregnancy. Again, you want all of that. You want increased pro uterine growth. You want mam mammary gland proliferation. Now, progesterone also increases. And what does progesterone do? Um, remember, what it, what does it do to the endometrium? It um, it makes the endometrium secretory. It makes it a uh, makes it a happy place for the for the zygote and the egg to uh, the pregnancy to develop and grow. And now we're going to talk about HCG a little bit. HCG and human placental lactogen both come from, excuse me, both come from syncytial trophoblast. Remember, those are cells in the placenta. So we're going to make some HCG. And remember, the HCG is very similar to, um, the alpha subunit is very similar to FSH, LH, and TSH. And so it's going to mimic LH, and it's going to maintain the corpus luteum. Why would it do that? What was the function of the corpus luteum? Do you remember what was it doing? It was making progesterone. And the progesterone was, again, we said, it makes the, plus the uterus a happy place for the, the for fertilized egg to, to grow and develop. As you can see in the beginning, there's not much progesterone. So you have a bunch of HCG here stimulating that corpus luteum, um, which to, to, con to not die off and to continue making progesterone. And the HCG, um, eventually the placenta by 8 to 10 weeks will make enough progesterone on its own. And so your corpus luteum will die off. And as you can see here, your HCG also decreases. And I'll also note that HCG is is detectable in urine, so this is what we're looking at during the urine test and to tell you whether you're pregnant or not. Finally, we have human placental lactogen, also made by the syncytial trophoblast. And the function of this is first to um, first it increases, stimulates insulin production. But more importantly, I'm going to make it bigger as it increases inst insulin resistance. And so what, what that means is that the body is going to be less responsive to insulin. So your bodies don't listen to insulin as much, so you have more difficulty putting all that glucose in your blood into the cells, so you have increased blood glucose. And that happens when... Um, the maternal pancreatic function cannot overcome this increased insulin resistance. And if you look at this um, this blue curve here, you note that it increases during pregnancy as time goes on. So as time goes on, you have an increased risk for gestational hypertension. And that is due to this insulin resistance from the human placental lactogen. All right, now it's going to, we're going to do a brief look at the physiological changes during pregnancy. Okay, and we're going to look at a, only a few organ systems to keep it simple. Look at the heart, we're going to look at the lungs, and we're going to look at the blood. We're just going to think about it, and it all makes sense when you think about basically having a second human in, in, the, in the same body, second, second body to nurse. So what do you think about the heart? How much do you think you're going to need extra blood? Yes. So the heart's going to compensate for that and it's going to increase its cardiac output. It's going to do that by increasing heart rate. So you're going to pump more blood out. And for the lungs, what do you think about oxygen demand? Is it going to go up or down? Oxygen demand goes up. And what about CO2 production? Now you have two bodies making CO2, so you have increased CO2. And what is the body's response to increase CO2? So you're going to increase your respiratory rate to ventilate out all that CO2. And note that tidal volume actually stays the same. OK, 
Okay, tidal volume stays the same, but respiratory rate increases. Finally, for blood, we're going to look at anemia, the um, uh, hemoglobin, and we're also going to consider coagulability. So we just talked about how cardiac output increases. So you have an increased amount of fluid, and you also get just get a bunch of increased plasma, um, and then your so plasma increases a lot. And the body actually compensates by increasing red blood cells as well. But this is, this is more, you see. So now you're going to dilute those red blood cells. So you're going to decrease your hemoglobin. And that's anemia. Okay. And the coagulability, what I want you to think about is, remember how pregnancy during childbirth, you ever seen those movies where women, they, they bleed a ton. Okay, that's a, that's a big problem during childbirth. And so the body's, how do you think evolutionarily it's going to adapt to that? It's going to increase coagulability. So coagulability increases. And the other way to remember this is, remember we just talked about how estrogen, estrogen increases during pregnancy. And estrogen is stimul stimulates coagulation factors. So that's how estrogen can also increase coagulability. Okay, so that's it for uh, hormones and physiological changes in pregnancy. Remember just to focus on the heart, the lungs, and the blood. And it should be, it should be all pretty easy, all common sense stuff, just thinking about how you have an extra human in the body to, for the body to adapt to.